guys, Tyler here. Today I'm trying out a new detective puzzle game called The Case of the Golden Idol. This game is heavily inspired by The Return of the Ober Din, except it has no annoying backtracking or pixel hunting. I did play the demo of this forever ago, but it was a long time ago, so I don't really remember the story beats. And thank God, there is a no pixel hunting mode. Highlights all the interactable things. This, this game is actually very deep as far as detective work goes, as far as I remember. So we, here we just have a fun scene of of uh, two friends playing with an invisible rope swing. Ah, yes, detective work. But anyway, we can look at the <laughs> people, see what they're saying. I knew what you were plotting, you snake. See what items they have on them, a pipe, a letter. Both parties agreed to these terms for the expedition to Monkey Paw Island. So there's names and you can tap on them and they drag to the board. So there's two people, Albert Clownsley, who is right to two thirds of all valuables for funding the expedition. And Oberian Geller writes to one third of all values and any golden statues found for providing the map to the expedition site. And he's got a dagger on him. Interesting. What about this falling man? Ah, a scalpel. Ooh, a map. And I can click on the areas. All right, so there's a lot of words I'll be working with. He's a medicine bottle. And then the same agreement. So this could be Geller because he has the map. But who says the provider of the map is the one who currently possesses it? You can also go to thinking. This is where all the puzzle solving happens. Uh, where do I go? Fuck me. Where do I put my face cam? Now we can drag the clues in and while I'm not positive, it seems most likely Oberon is the one with the map. So he's getting pushed off, but I'll just leave that as a maybe right now. Also I'm supposed to figure out where we are right now. And I think that actually kind of worked visually. I think I remember a little bit from the demo and that you can see off the distance, there's two islands which match up to the islands in the horn of thumb. Yeah, so it's the horn of thumb and I need to find five more clues, it would seem. Well, let's see what's in the backpack. Two backpacks, one with tobacco, coins and gems. So this is the additional wages. And this here is the coins and gems and the golden idol along with medical instruments. And also I'm pretty sure I can just, oh yeah, I can just click on different words. I, I see now if a word has a dotted line, that means I have clicked on it. But if it's a bold line, then I haven't. So yeah, we got to get all the names. Okay, I have all the clues now, so now I can put it together. So we're in the Horn of Thumb. Nice. And even tells me everything's filled in correctly. Thank you. And the guy who's being pushed, his name is Oberon Jeller. Albert Cloudsley pushes him. And now we just fill in the last clue, which is quite self-explanatory. Huh. While Dr. Oberon Jeller was surveying the war weather with his looking glass, his expedition partner, Albert Clownsley, suddenly pushed them off the cliff. And the story begins. They've really um, cleaned this up since I played it last. So we're following the story specifically of the idol. And next is Albert Clownsley, since he lives uh, the untimely passing of a rural gentleman. There's a man here. Man is not breathing, his head is badly wounded. Ring with a ruby. What's this book up here? Henley Clover Lead Poisoning? It's just a book about lead poisoning that has been disturbed. Uh, we have a ladder, kind of nostalgic. We have a cool August of the 23rd. Oh, I like that. Even Mark's clues that I visited with a red. Spontaneous combustion. I, Sebastian Cloudsley, will share my humble contribution to the science of anatomy and chemistry. So not Albert Cloudsley. This is his diary of the 22nd, his last day alive. He woke up, dressed in dining attire, had roast duck for lunch, changed to hunting attire, hunted badgers, no luck today, returned home, changed to researching attire, then to dining attire, and then beef loin for supper, filled in my diary and went to bed to continue reading for my research. There's also a map with some of the areas, Woodshire, Crow, Crow Tower, Blackfield. This is a very tattered coat. It looks like it has experienced some spontaneous combustion. There's also a horse and a yacht in the river and the golden idol. So I found every clue. Let's see what's going on. Well, this is obviously Sebastian Cloudsley who's dead. And we can see his different attire, researching attire. And I believe this is his hunting attire. I should look at the journal. Well, last thing he was in was his dining attire. There is material to be discovered. Oh, right. I need the third thing of his attire. Well, there's this. Oh, this clue's been added to the thinking panel. I think I was right the first time, actually. 
Because, yeah, this is obviously dining attire. Uh, it was right to peg this as hunting attire. So, Sebastian Cloudsley, Lord of... Oh, Lord of where? Well, he has water outside of his window, so it's likely Blackfield. The others do not have water. Also, I thought you should actually see the top clue. Cause of death was... Well, he's wearing hunting attire. So, obviously, it was something while hunting. Uh, he had a head wound. Uh, so he probably fell th from his horse while he was hunting. So the Cloudsley family is something going on. Although this guy just died of a pretty normal cause, uh, unless the golden idol caused that horse to go crazy. What the hell is this? Oh my god. Seventeen thirty-three to seventeen eighty-six, and we have a man on fire. The dramatic departure of an outsider. Who? Oh, someone burning themselves, and a lot of people here. Spare me, devil! I was simply following orders. Astonishing monkey man. Property of Pear Butter Brothers. So he is a Pear Brother. Is a knife with an A carved in it. He's a pear. Hmm. A man who's on fire a similar looking knife but with a j carved into it possibly j pair and a horse brush what have you been up to j pair what the blazes you had been horse racing hmm had raging sultan to win 35 pounds on the line don't know anything else about you besides you're a degenerate gambler you're holding a golden idol now if it's all the same to you i will take my leave it's the spontaneous combustion spell. The same thing Sebastian was possibly researching. Sacred glyphs for combustion on the idol. These I am going to write down. No, not because I want to do this spell myself. No, no, no. I just, you know, it might be helpful. Definitely not going to combust anyone intentionally. So you first must cast a freezing spell. Don't know how important that is. Here's the golden idol. And of course, it's been set to combustion. It is correct. The idol is more powerful than I remember it being. A ring with a ruby. This is the same ruby ring that Sebastian Cloudsley had. Hmm. And some money. What about this man who just showed up? Ash Blair. Just a tobacco brand, I suppose. Prepare the carriage for tomorrow. We are to visit my, visit my nephew, E.C. I wonder who E.C. is. He's got some money. He's got a dagger. Say, hmm, interesting. And a saddlebag. There's a note on the door. Ah! Adam and James. So this here must be Adam Pear. The guy on fire must be James Pear. And in fact, we can go to thinking right now. If I want to, I can just mark down the clues. So it's Adam who's running, James on fire. And I, what I do know is that James Pear died from spontaneous combustion. But there's a lot more to this story. First off, this here man. What an unexpected turn of events. An embroider a handkerchief with EC on it. So he wrote the letter to this man? What else do you have? Dear Edmund, probably the E in EC, it has reached my attention that you are seeking a capable new servant. I've just the man for you. David Gorin is an experienced coachman with a diverse set of talents that I'm sure you'll find very useful. If you're displeased with the services, do not hesitate to let me know. Coachman, like driver of a carriage? Let me look this up. Yes, it would appear that is the case. So this man is likely Edmund. Let me just get that down. And then this man is likely David. I mean, he was written about the carriage, so he's probably the coachman. He also has a stiletto blade, three pounds and three shillings, and the Lund London Gazetteer. Edmund Cloudsley. Oh, what this family is up to. His speech stirs Parliament, huh? What are these Cloudsleys up to, man? Let's keep looking. I saw there was a thing up here. Like a family symbol on the door. My non-existent three-year-old daughter could draw better than that. And an inside room. Ah, house symbol. So this is Batley, Cloudsley, and Cubert. So this is the house of Batley that we're in. And thankfully, I'm not blocking anything with my face clam. <laughs> Fat Lord, the pair twins. So they, they hate the twins, or hate, hate the lord of this house. Who are you? My apologies, he can be so bad here sometimes. Six rings, four pounds. Guitar blade? Oh, she's wealthy, wealthy. A fan? A book. She could be a resident of this home. One of the lords here. There's an attorney, Nicholas Maker. 
So probably this lad. I would not have expected one of your family to treat a legal document in such a way. I'm appalled. Oh yeah, he's the attorney. Oh, this is the same ruby red ring. So maybe he didn't steal the ring. Maybe it's just, you know, they, there's a ring maker that makes a lot of the same rings and they're popular among royalty. And now we're seeing the family tree. So Albert Cloudsley, who pushed the guy off the cliff. Oh, birth Sebastian Cloudsley. He died. And that leads up to this, these events. Wow, so we don't even get to see much of Albert's life. It's just Sebastian dies. Rose, Edmund. Willard writes the associate with the question mark. And Peter Batley. So, in inheritors to uh, Sebastian's will? Yes, as it says in the top of the page. There's a lot to fill in here. So this man is very obviously attorney. Willard Wright. And the woman we're probably talking to is Beatrix Batley, who gave birth to Peter Batley. And I could fill in a little on the other side. We can see Sebastian's will. But the story hasn't all come together just yet. Let's keep looking at the clues, though. There's a book on the floor. Aphorisms. How to be happy. How to avoid being upset. How to be inspired. How to be scared. As much as I want to read this rich book about how to live my life by some rich dude, I think it's mostly just for clues. Here we have some burned documents. Rose Cubert. Research. Lots of burned documents. Oh, okay. Someone gave the golden idol of Xenopolis to someone who didn't want that to be traced. I, I, you will know what to do with it. I guess I should read these. I want you to put your sharp mind to better use than mere politics. Therefore, I bequeath to you the notes from the research I've undertaken on astronomy. I grant you to finish and publish it under our names. Both our names. We've met so rarely after you left her colonies. Therefore, I bequeath to you my savings, land, and the Blackfield Manor? But what? Five lines versus four lines? Some of these line up, some of these don't. Oh! I see. The Blackfield Manor House. Come home and establish a museum of my life and accomplishments. Something doesn't seem right about that note. I, Sebastian Cloudsley of Blackfield County, being in bodily health and in sound disposing mind and memory, nominates and appoint Nicholas Maker as executor of my last will and testament. And then another one of these, oh, burnt, uh, another document by the fire, possibly burnt by the gambler guy. Dear Peter Batley, we've sent you frequent reminders reminding the settlement of your debt, and yet to date the debt remains unpaid. We humbly request that you make your payments as soon as possible, or we'll be forced to take the matter into our own hands. The debt currently stands at 255 pounds. Blackguard and buck loans. So Peter Batley owes a debt. Maybe that's why he's gambling? Let's see. It would make sense that this is Peter Batley. It also makes sense that this lady is actually Rose Cubert, since especially I've gotten all the clues. And frankly, there is no Beatrix. And Beatrix isn't an inheritor. There's also... Ah, a bunch of letters now. Mm, okay, this, this was just a bit of a bug. It seems that in fact this note was four lines on both sides. Odd. So, and then these are the names. So, maybe I have to figure out which of these papers actually physically match up with the note. So I can figure out what's addressed to whom. So out of the letters, I know that Edmund Cloudsley had been into politics because, well, he was in the paper, as we saw earlier. My dear late sister, your mother, disclosed your financial troubles to me long ago and I resolved to help you. And then he gave him <laughs> aphorisms. And this was Peter Batley. You get a house. You get astronomy research. You get the golden idol of Xenopolis. You get some nice words. Enjoy, Peter. Don't gamble yourself to death. So then there's two more beneficiaries. Willard Wright and Rose Cubert. Well, clearly then, what has to happen? I mean, either Rose or Willard is holding the idol and it's obviously not Rose, so this has to be Will Willard Wright. Uh-oh. Wait, what am I doing? This is Willard Wright. How on earth did I put Willard Wright there? What, what was I even thinking at that time? This has to be Willard Wright then, obviously. There we go. So he was a, given the golden idol of Xenopolis. And the last beneficiary is Rose. So now the story itself. This is Willard with the golden idol setting someone afire. So it sounds like someone's trying to take the idol from him. And someone ordered two people to take it from them. Probably the pair brothers. And whoops, it should be Sebastian Cloudsley's will. Now who's the one who actually ordered them to do such a thing? Could it be... 
of the gambling addict? Well, I mean, he's probably not happy to have received the aphorisms. So it's probably Peter Batley. I mean, he's also there at the scene and he was probably upset to receive them, which makes perfect sense. And he's like, well, gambling isn't going to uh, get me out of this debt. So maybe the golden idol will. And interesting on the will, Williard was written with a question mark. So no one in the family really knows who he is, but he knows how to use the idol. So we'll see, I guess, continue from his journey. And the next chapter. Well, this is very exciting. I could do one chapter per video, at least at this rate. I'm excited to see where the story goes and what sort of clues we'll have to uncover. It started off very simple, but I expected to get much more involved. So thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. More Case of the Golden Idol hopefully coming soon. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Have a wonderful day and peace.